A wise man once told me that the sign of a successful life is when the last check you write bounces. <laughs> Our next guest was in academia until his restless interest led him into business. He leveraged a rare combination of technical knowledge and business skills into creating a fabulously successful company. With the same recklessness and curiosity that enabled him to build his wealth, he is applied to the problems of our world with the ultimate goal, he says, of dying poor. His 250 staff and affiliates working in and around his initiatives, scientists and support people work in his Hakai Institute on our remote central coast, learning more about our marine world. Others work in Central America, exploring new ways to improve the quality of life of humans. Few people know of his work, which he has done quietly for years. Tonight, he will do something unusual. Talk about it. Please welcome Eric Peterson. I'm going to uh, tell you how we do uh, serious scientific research on the British Columbia Central Coast right in the middle of what people know of as the Great Bear Rainforest. First, what I'm going to do is think about the history of that coast for you. So, 18,000 years ago, not all that long ago, uh, our coast was covered by ice uh, a kilometer thick. And as you see, grinding glaciers carved really steep channels in the, in the landscape. Um, if we move forward to about 15,000 years ago, um, the, uh, the shoreline became free of ice, Humans arrived at that time and, and settled. If we look at our coast today, it bears the, uh, shows the history of, that, of that glacial, those glacial events. All those channels, all those inlets, all those bays, all that amazing uh, landscape. It creates a diverse habitat for humans and for all sorts of, of other creatures. So it's really a remarkable landscape. We need to understand what the history of it is. This is an area that I, is sort of my part of the world. Um, I really wanted to study it scientifically when we got involved out here 10 years ago. I wanted to study its history, I wanted to study its ecology, and particularly I wanted to see how that landscape was changing over time. Uh, but there were no facilities, there were no resources, and there wasn't really much opportunity to do science in this beautiful landscape. So what we decided to do was to change all that. And the first thing we did is we bought a fishing lodge and we decided to convert it into a research station. That was in 2010. Let me give you some perspective about where we are on the coast. So we're all alone on Calvert Island, and as that green shows, we're right in the middle of, a, of an extended climat, coastal climatic zone that extends all the way from California to Alaska. And I like to think that we're right in the middle of that amazing, amazing landscape. Um, so that we are on a uh, if you like, this is the area where we are in, a, in an aerial view. Our research station is here. Uh, we're on a 200-acre site, uh, which is really quite, re quite a remarkable part of the world. Uh, but more importantly, if you look at this slide, uh, and down in the left-hand corner, uh, we're right in the middle of the most highly protected part of the Great Bear Rainforest. So the dark area around our facility there is all uninhabited, and it's fully protected under the uh, Great Bear Rainforest Agreement. So what I see is almost by commercial analogy, I mean, this is a part of the world that presents an amazing opportunity to do science. So what we call what we do an ecological observatory, and basically what we're doing is we're analyzing what we have there, looking at all aspects of, of, of life, and trying to figure out how they, how they change. This look at from the air, uh, the facility that we have there, this converted fishing lodge that we've done all sorts of things with. Uh, we've got the capability of housing 100 people. Um, and we also have laboratories, we have classrooms that are all kind of integrated into the, into the facility. The thing that we have to, you have to remember up there is we're in the middle of the central coast, so we're completely off the grid. So all the things that we take for advantage down here, electricity, water, sewage, we all have to do ourselves. So a number of systems that I find extremely interesting that's been kind of a an interesting challenge uh, to, uh, to work on up there. Uh, the star of our show is our big solar array, which produces about half the power that we need. But my favorite is our sewage system, and again, there's all sorts of interesting uh, stuff that we do. So, in that facility, in, in that place, so how do we do work? 
Um, some of the work that we do there is really what I would call old school ecology. Uh, out on the landscape, collecting, processing samples the old fashioned way. Uh, for example, uh, really, we know really important uh, part of the world up there are our kelps, our seaweeds, and, and, our, and our seagrasses, but uh, are very important indicators of, uh, of ecosystem health. But from my point of view, the perspective that I come from, I respect that discipline that we see in the picture there, but I was thinking of a smarter way of doing things, how we can use technology to uh, maybe do science in a different way, to do some of it faster, some of it more efficiently. I can only touch on a few things to just sort of illustrate. So we have a large sensor network there. So we have, uh, to some extent, we've taken our whole ecosystem around it, and we've wired it and enabled it on the internet. So we can follow all of the things that are happening in the ocean, on the tops of the mountains, in the landscape, in the rivers, and follow it automatically without necessarily having to have people out there in gumboots doing sampling all year round. So that allows us to do it around the, around the clock every month of the year. Other thing that's very interesting, and again, I'm just sort of pulling highlights out of that, is figuring out how to use um, satellites, aircraft, uh, to, uh, uh, to map what's going on our coast, to map, uh, map the things that we're interested in. One thing that's really been quite exciting uh, in the last couple of years has been the advent of drone technology. And as you see in the picture, most people know what, uh, what these little drones are. Uh, they're great for filming your wedding. But you can also uh, do, you can do serious science with them, and that's been really quite exciting for us. So say, for example, you can program your, zone, your, your drone with a computer so that it flies up above the area you're interested in analyzing, and it clicks around and does a, in, in, a, in, a, uh, in a grid, uh, and it uh, uh, takes, your, uh, takes your pictures of, uh, of a, in a computer-controlled grid, and then out of that grid, it creates a, a nice mosaic structure, uh, which is an enti uh, entire vision of the, of the area of, of, of shallow sea that's underneath it. And then the nice thing about that is, rather than being out there in your gumboots, uh, you can then process that image to look at the two, uh, two most important things, uh, two important plants in that picture, which are the, uh, the, uh, um, the seagrass and the kelp. Uh, the computer can go around, analyze everything, and you can do your maps. So it's very interesting to see how things change. We're very interested in climate change uh, that happens over a long period of time. But we have to understand that all sorts of things change the landscape. And one thing that's interesting are sea otters. Uh, you may know sea otters, they eat, they, eat, uh, uh, see, they eat sea urchins, and sea urchins eat kelp. So that when you've got, when you, uh, at, at Hakai, what we had is for a long time, we didn't have any sea otters, and so there was lots of sea urchins, and there was very little kelp. Uh, when the sea urchins came back in 2013, that was what it was, that's what the landscape looked like before we had otters, and this is what the landscape looks like after we have otters. So a dramatic change in one year uh, that happens, and then we can monitor it quite efficiently with the tools we have. So that's basically uh, a quick snapshot of, the, of, the, uh, of some of the things that we do, a little bit of a taste of it. And so it's been a very uh, much of a pleasure to talk to, uh, talk to you about what we do. So thank you very much.